So how did you move from banking into journalism to being a professional, doing it full time, reporting mm. the Middle East? How, how did that transition take place? Um, essentially, I had a sort of proverbial kick at the backside when I was in my final days of banking in um, working for Flemings in London. I was over promoted to a director. And whereas I'd actually, be, you know, I'm going to be completely blunt here. I was good at bringing in the business in the Middle East. I brought in two, over two billion dollars worth of, business, of funds under management. Um, which for the sort of nascent bankers amongst you, you know, is kind of okay these days, but it was a very big deal back then. That money didn't go to me or to the bank. It was kind of, they looked after it and creamed off a percentage of it. Um, but um, back in London, it wasn't fun. I was in the director's dining room one lunchtime and somebody leant over and said, you've seen that balance, that balance sheet, bloody strong assets. And I thought, God, you know, this, this, that's lunchtime conversation. This is not for me. This, these are not my people. Um, and um, so I retrained very vigorously. I, I researched what courses were out there. I joined, I think, the BFI, the British Film Institute. I joined the Royal Television Society. I went to a talk by Rory Bremner. I went up to see him afterwards and said, excuse me, you know, how do I get into news? And he was very nice. I had an opportunity to thank him the other day because he, he could have said, you know, no thanks. God, I nearly fell off there. That would have been good. Um, and um, he was very helpful. He gave me some names and, you know, I banged on a lot of doors. And I eventually managed to get a two-week unpaid work attachment at BBC World, which is the international sort of satellite arm of BBC News. And they said, well, you know, you're kind of in a suit and you're a bit older than you're 33. What do you want? I said, well, look, I want to know how you do this and I want to, I want to join you well, there's no jobs at the end of this. You know, they were kind of trying to be brutal to be kind. But I learned the ropes fairly quickly and really found it fascinating. And I loved doing the night shifts because although they were 13 hours long, they were, ah, goodness me, they were, um, they were hardcore, but they were fun to do. And you felt like you were in this satellite spaceship with news coming in from all over the place. And, you know, a feed was coming in from Jakarta. Something new just happened in... I don't know, in Los Angeles, and you were putting it all together and churning it out and putting out the news in the middle of the night. And it was almost like sort of you felt you were part of some almost a conspiracy. It was very exciting. And then I volunteered to do all the, sh the shifts that, that nobody else wanted to do, the weekends, the bank holidays, the, uh, the night shifts, um, and made myself available. So they eventually said, well, do you want to come back and do some freelance shifts? This time you'll be paid for it. And I said, you know, absolutely. But I... I was very much pigeonholed as a producer and I wanted to report. So I bought a, a camera, a d digital video camera, and sent myself off to places like Iran and Oman and did features for the business channel, the World Business Report, and got those onto TV. And people started saying, I think I saw a report. Of, was that you doing that? Who was your cameraman? You're looking at him, you know, and, and it was kind of, okay. So people slowly, gradually started to sort of take me a little bit more seriously. And then I sent myself out to Dubai as the, the Gulf correspondent um, on a salary of zero. But it was, I had to do it. Um.